Hare Krishna. So today we are <coughs> moving into the 10th chapter. Yesterday we saw devotional service, right? The most confidential knowledge. So before we start off with chapter 10, let's start off with Mangala Charan. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Anyanath Murandasya. Nyananjala Chalataya. Chakshuru Vilitam Yena. Asmai Shri Guru E Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa, Kadamaya, Dadati Swapadatikam, E Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dira Bando Jagatpati, Purvi Shubhika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namastute, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Shabam Sute Devi, Pranamami Haripriye, Vancha Kalpada Rubyascha, Kripasindu Vya Evacha, Patidana Bhavani Vyo, Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha, Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara, Shri Vachaji Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. So, loud Hare Krishna from everyone. And whoever wants to read can have your hand raised. Yeah, Hare Krishna. So today what are we going to see? Vibhuti Yoga. This is the opulence of the Absolute. Right? So what are the opulences? What is the thing? So before that, let's have a quick recap on chapter 9. 9, 1 to 10. Raja Vidya, Raja Dhuyam, Pavitramida Muttamam. What does it mean? Uttamam. It's a most confidential knowledge and the highest, right? Nothing is equal to this. So who's giving this guarantee? Krishna is saying that. So in the ninth chapter begins with Bhagavad, Aishwarya, Jnana, right? So he's giving that knowledge and he gives a guarantee there's nothing beyond this knowledge. And 9.11 to 25, Satadam Kirte Yantoma. How do we approach Krishna? What are all the ways and means to approach Krishna? And 26 to 34, <coughs> one manna bhava mat bhakto means the sweetness of devotional service how sweet the devotional service by itself is it is not just the destination of going to the spiritual world but the journey itself is so pleasant that people won't be able to forget Hare Krishna 10.1 you can read ma you can read ma The Supreme Lord said, My dear friend, mighty armed Arjuna, listen again to my supreme word, which I shall impart to you for your benefit and which will give you great joy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, thank you so much, Rika. So, the Supreme Lord said, My dear friend, right? So, so do you remember the picture? So, chat is open. Can you make up what picture this represents? The one which you see. Can anyone guess? Okay, it's in the chat. Yeah, so this is, uh, is during, just before the war, right? <laughs> when Arjuna uh, and the Duryodhana approach Krishna, Krishna pretends to be sleeping and Duryodhana takes the you know, place in the head, whereas Arjuna sits where his leg is, right? So that shows the difference. And uh, that, uh, uh, so obviously when Krishna opens, you know, he sees Arjuna and he's in the first of all. Uh, despite the fact that Duryodhana had come. And we all know the other part of Mah Mahabharata where uh, finally, uh, you know, Krishna, uh, you know, Arjuna wanted Krishna on his side, whereas Duryodhana was thinking he's such an idiot to choose Krishna because, you know, Narayana Sene is so powerful and how can anybody leave Krishna's Narayana Sene? You know, that's the mightiest <coughs> military uh, troops and that too, Nirade Pani, right? He is going to be without a 
He's not going to take any weapons. So what's the point in having Krishna? But he doesn't understand that he is the biggest fool. So many people even now think they are intelligent, but they are intelligent idiots because they think they are too smart. But the actual power is in Krishna, right? Whether or not he has a saving. So uh, he says, listen to my uh, supreme word. He's telling, listen, Shunu. And this word Shunu is said so many times in Bhagavad Gita. He says, which I shall impart to you for your benefit. And why is this given again and again? Krishna is giving everything for our benefit. It is not that Krishna is going to benefit. So he's telling, for you I am giving. Which will give you great joy. So it's all for it. So whatever Krishna is doing, he is not short staffed in spiritual world because spiritual world is three fourth and material world is only one fourth, right? So he is not short staffed there, but he is telling all this because he wants us to ask. <laughs> Name vidu suragana nabhavam nama harshayaha aham adehi devanam. Maharshi Nam Chasar Vashaha. Hare Krishna. Neither the host of demigods nor the great sages know my origin. For in every respect, I am the source of the demigods and the sages. 10.3. Hare Krishna. Yeah, go ahead. He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the supreme lord of all the worlds, he Undiluted among men is freed from all sins. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So very clearly the 10.2 says, even the host of demigods, even the devatas, right? And even the sages, we have that Sapta Rishi, seven Rishis, which will come later, right? Do not know the greatness of me, right? I am the source of all these devatas and these sages. Why does Krishna say that? Because this, why does Krishna speak about himself in Bhagavad Gita? This is the reason. Because even the devatas and the sages do not know about Krishna. And he who knows him as unborn, right? So Krishna is Soyambu, right? Uh, I already told Atma Mayaya, which means he comes on his own wish. He is not forced to take birth and he is unborn, <coughs> right? He is beginningless and he is a supreme lord and undiluted, right? So we not at all confused, so clear. When someone clearly knows this, he is free from all the sins. So, can anyone guess the picture here? Who this is? No, can anyone guess in this picture who it is? Hare Krishna, no right or wrong answer. You can type in chat or you can just guess. This is this is actually uh, ah, come on, some of these is this is Devaki Krishna's mother and when she is carrying uh, Krishna, all the devadas, all the demigods want to see. So they come there and bless. She does not know they are there, but she could feel the presence of someone, right? So they, so that is what is happening. So when Krishna is in her womb, she can feel the presence of a lot of demigods who actually come and take their blessings. You can see Brahma, you can see Shiva, you can see Narada. All of them are there. Hare Krishna. Type in the seven great sages and before them, the four other great sages and the Manus, progenitors of mankind, are born out of my mind and all creatures in these planets descend from them. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So he's saying, the seven great sages, this is what is the Sapta Rishis. And before them, the four other sages, right? You have that Sanat Kuna, Kumara, Sat, the four Brahma's children, right? The four small uh, Kumaras. And the Manu, right? Manu, we already saw who is Manu, right? Manvantara. They are supposed to create mankind. Are born out of my mind. So they are called Manasaputra for uh, Krishna. They are called Manasaputra for Brahma also. He says that they are all born out of mind. And all creatures in this planet descend from them. Because all of them finally come. So basically Krishna is the primary. Brahma becomes a secondary creator. Etam vibhutin yogam cha. Mamayo veti tatpataha, so vi kalpena yogena. He who knows in truth this glory and power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <coughs> so he says, Hare Krishna. 
Just one second, I go. Yeah, so he says he who knows the truth in this glory and power of mine, right? Whoever knows this glory of mine and whoever knows this power, okay, engages in unalloyed devotional service. Unalloyed means abilashya, right? Never, uh, you know, stoppable. It's un un unflinching devotional service. Thank you, Anuja. You can start reading from the next. Thank you, Rekha. Very nicely saved it. Hare uh, Krishna. Uh, he who knows in, in the truth, right? So he will completely engage in devotional service. So that's what he says. Hare Krishna. Aham sarvasya prabhu matta sarvam pantava iti matva bhajante maam utha bhava samanvitha Hare Krishna. I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <coughs> so he says, I am the source of all spiritual and material world. So even in 7.4, we saw his external energy is a material world. And in 7.5, we saw that his internal energy comprises of the spiritual world, right? So everything emanates from Krishna, right? The wise who knows, obviously, you know, whoever is intelligent will know this and he will engage in the devotional service and worship him with entire heart. So that's what he says. And let's see this Hare Krishna. Machitta matkata prana bodayanta parashparam katayanta shamam nityam dushyanti charam anticha Hare Krishna. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are, their lives are sorry. Yeah. The, the thoughts, thoughts of, of my uh, devotees dwell in me. Their lives are surrendered to me, and they drive. Uh, they drive. Uh, drive great satisfaction and bliss, and lighting one another and conversing in about me. So you know, uh, yesterday you know we had some of the devotees who said that the moment I think of Krishna, you know, my I bothers. So the great uh, any devotee for that matter, and especially pure devotee, are those who are not contaminated. They, you know. So dwell in me. Thoughts of my pure devotee dwell in me. So, you know, he says he also thinks of them. They also think of him. And their lives are totally surrendered. And they derive great satisfaction, right? They have so much of satisfaction and bliss. Just about talking about Krishna. Just see this one moment you will understand. Right? It's called Krishna dance. So can you see the amount of joy and pleasure? And we will not be able to understand so much because we are still not there. We are not the thing. So you can see hours together they keep dancing. So is it right or wrong to be engaged? So Sanya season does not talk about not thinking of anything. It talks about being completely involved in Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Desham satata yukhana bhajatam priti purvakam dadam i buddhi yogam tam enamam upaya upayanti te. Hare Krishna. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He says those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love. He says very clearly with love, right? Those who constantly are devoted and worship me with love. Okay. Uh, so, and I give the understanding by which they can come. So, everybody keeps asking, how should I come to Krishna? What is it I should do? What I should follow? Many Mataji's also have messaged me, you know, what should I follow? What I should do? 
nothing you need to do. Krishna will automatically show you direction to approach. So, can anyone guess who this small boy is? This five-year-old boy? Can anyone guess who is this boy? He is Dhruva Maharaj. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. He is Dhruva. And he goes into, uh, you know, pre, uh, into this <laughs> tapas. Right? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. Right? For six months. And that made, uh, you know, uh, Vishnu, right? Narayana come before him. So, those who are constantly devoted and worshipping with love, I give the understanding so automatically. Even though it's a five-year child, even though Narada was a five-year child, Krishna gave the understanding because it depends on how much. Laulyam, what is the qualification? Laulyam, greed, right? You need to have greed to go to Krishna. So, that means what is the qualification? Hare Krishna. Esham evanukam partam aham anyana jamtamah nasayami atma bhavat so jnana deepena bhashvata Hare Krishna. Out of compassion for them, I dwell, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge, the darkness born on the, uh, uh, the darkness born of ignorance. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so very clearly, out of compassion for them, right? He's very clearly telling because of compassion, okay? Dwell in their hearts, right? Destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge and things. So basically what he's telling because of compassion, Okay, I am dwelling in the hearts. They, that whatever lamp of knowledge I destroy with the shine, okay, the darkness, with the help of the lamp, I remove the darkness. There is a, in science and spirituality, there is a video on Einstein, which I will play, not today, tomorrow we'll finish, uh, today we'll finish mind control. We'll do it the coming <coughs> weeks. So he said very clearly, out of compassion for them, I dwell in the heart and I destroy them with, you know, with the help of the light of knowledge, I destroy the darkness. And immediately, you know, Arjuna offers prayers. And this is a very uh, important uh, memory verse. So you can learn and you can offer it daily. Hare Krishna. Arjuna Vacha Param Brahmam Parandamam Parvitram. One second. I'm, are you able to see the screen? Yes. <coughs> okay. Arjuna Vacha Param Brahma Parandama Parvitram Paramam Bhavan. Purusham Shashritam Divyam Adi Devam Ajam Vibhum Ahustvam Vishaya Pumsha Ahustvam Vishaya Sarve Devashir Naradastata Atilo Devalo Vyasa Swayam Chaiva Bhavishime Hare Krishna. As you said, you are the Supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the Supreme Abdob. And the pu and purifier, the absolute truth and the eternal divine person. You are the primal God, transcendental and original, and you are the unborn and pervading beauty. All the great sages such, such as Narada, Asta, Devala, and Vyasa proclaim this of you. And now you yourself are declaring it to me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So two things. One is Arjuna is first appreciating him. He's telling Param Brahma, you know, you are the greatest of all, and Param Dhamma, you are sweet about Dhamma means the residence where you live about. Pavitram Paramam Bhava, right? You are the most pure person, right? And you are the topmost of all. Purusham Shashvatam Divya. Shashvatam means permanent, you're always there, and eternal tree. And Krishna is the only Purusha. Rest of them, including men in this world, are not Purushas. He's the only Purusha. Purusha means enjoy. Right? Divya means very transcendental. Adi Devam, that is the beginning. Ajam Bhikum, right? He has everything. He's the original God. Now, this is his prayer. Now, you tell, okay, Arjuna is his friend. Naturally, he will also talk like that only about Krishna because he's a fan club, right? So, he's also giving a testimony. He's telling, Aavustam Rishaya Sarve. Not only me, you know, a lot of Rishis, Devashi Narada, okay? She feels the same too. Atilo, Asito, Asito is one more Rishi. Vyasa, all of them, Swayam, Chaiva, Bhavishime, they are also declaring the same thing about you, right? So, he is telling, whatever I am telling is basically attested by these, uh, you know, sages. So, so beautifully, Arjuna is vouching, not only just vouching, but he is also giving a testimony of people who will also give them the same promise, right? Same feeling they have, Hare Krishna. Sarvam etadritam manye yanmam keshava Nahite Bhagavan Yaktim Vidur Devanadavanavaha 
Hare Krishna. Oh Krishna, I totally accept as truth all that you have told me. Neither the gods nor the demons. Oh Lord, no, the third personality. Hare Krishna. Very clearly he's telling that nobody knows the truth, right? We saw earlier, neither the gods nor the demons know your personality. Thy personality means it's referring to Krishna. He says, nobody will know your personality. And let's hear what he says in 10.15. Hare Krishna. Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own poten potencies, O origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of go go God of gods, O supreme person, Lord of universe. Hare Krishna. He says, indeed, you alone know your potencies, right? So all your powerful potencies are known only by you and you are the origin of all the lords, right? You are the origin and you are the God of all the gods and you are the supreme person and you are the Lord <coughs> of the universe. So that is what he says. So he says, you are the only one who knows the potencies. Other than you, nobody knows the potencies. So you are the Lord of Lord and you are the original <coughs> person. And you are the God of all and you are the supreme most person. So you are Lord of the universe. He is declaring. What is he telling? Nobody, nobody, Devadas, nobody knows your power. Only the, you know, this, you only know. Because you are the most powerful. So he is declaring that. And he continues in 10.17. How should you meditate on you? In, way, uh, in what various forms are you to be contemplated? Oh, bless lords. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. He's very clearly telling me. Tell me how should I meditate on you? No, Arjuna is directly asking. You know, so far he was a friend. He was a cousin. He says that in what various forms are you? You know, so, so we all know so many avadas, nine avadas and all that. But you have to be contemplated. Which form should I think of you? How should I pray you? Tell me. Give me a heads up. Is what Arjuna is asking. And in 10.18, this is what is a speciality, right? The moment you know, if you don't know something or if you are in doubt, find out, right? Many people think Arjuna is questioning Krishna. No, he's not questioning, he's clarifying. The problem is most of the time in school and college, when we ask doubts, people will tell, why are you questioning me? Teachers give that, give us back, right? So we're so confused to even ask very genuine questions. But if your mood is to know the answer, then the question is genuine, right? Hare Krishna, 10.18. Tell me again in detail, O Janardana, Krishna, of your mighty potencies and glories, for I never tire of hearing your ambrosial words. Hare Krishna. So he's telling very clearly, tell me again in detail, right? Not short, give me complete story in detail, O Janardana, or your mighty potency and glories, right? I will never be tired of hearing to them. And he's saying, I'm never tired. Tell me again about your potency. So Arjuna is starting all over. I know you told me, but now I know you're the Parantama. Now I'm seeing your Vibhu. Now tell me what are your glories. I'm going to hear all over again. Right? Now, now these are some gods whom you'll know. I'm going to take the cursor and I just want you to keep telling me who they are. <laughs> can you see the cursor? Who's this? No right, wrong answer. So you can tell me. There is a curse. This one. Yeah, Shiva. This one. Lakshmi. No, sing properly. Brahma. Brahma, correct. And this one. Narayan. Narada. Narada. The one Vishnu. Who? Vishnu. Oh. Ah, Vishnu, correct. And who's this cute, cute little boy? Ah, and who's this greenish blue? Indra. Rama. Okay. And the one before? <laughs> Buddha. Buddha, correct. And uh, uh, who else should I ask? <coughs> okay. So we will go from here and we will see what about Krishna is telling, right? The blessed Lord said, yes, I will tell you of the splendorous manifestation, but only of those who are prominent, right? He's telling, okay, I will share with you. Oh, Arjuna, for my opul opulences, opulences are limitless, right? So 10th one is opulence, right? Vibhudi Yoga. So he's telling, I will tell my opulence is limitless. So I'm going to give you a fraction, very small percentage. I will give you. So Krishna starts off. He says that among the... Vishnu, you know, he is the Aditi. And among the light, basically among the Adityas, Adityas, he is the Vishnu. Among the light, he is the sun. Among the Marus, he is the Maruchi. And among the stars, he is the moon. Among Vedas, he is the Sama Veda. Now, you may tell Sama Veda is the best Veda. Yes, actually, of all four Vedas, you know, he calls himself that. 
Among the demigod is Indra, because you know Indra is the <coughs> uh, Devatas, right? Head of Devata. Among the senses, I am the mind. He says mind, right? Among the living beings, I am the living force. Life force means consciousness, right? Among Rudra, I am Shiva. Among Yakshas and Rakshasas, I am the Kumbhera. Among the priests, I am Bhas Brahaspati. Who is Brahaspati? Brahaspati is the teacher for the demigods, right? So very important, he is the teacher. So he says, among the priests, I am Brahaspati. Among the generals, I am Skanda. Among the bodies of water, I am the ocean. Among the sages, I am Guru. And among the vibration, I am Om. We already saw OM or AUM. A stands for Krishna, M stands for Radharani, and U stands for Jiva. Among the chanting of holy names, I am Japa. That is sacrifices, right? Sacrifices means anything done for the pleasure of Krishna. Among the immovable things, I am the Himalaya. And among the tree, I am the holy fig, just Ashwatha. Among the sages, I am Narada. Among the singers, I am Chitraratha. Among the men, I am monarch. Monarch means king, right? He's saying that king is a representative of God, right? Therefore, king takes 6% of the sin of the entire uh, nation or any leader for that matter gets that. Why? Because he is supposed to be teaching them in the Krishna conscious way and welfare is very important. Among the weapons, I am Vajra. Among the cows, I am Surabhi. So, we will see that again, you know, the cow is there, it's Surabhi cow and what is the speciality of Surabhi cow? Surabhi cow never stops giving milk. 24 bar 7 keeps giving milk. So, that's the speciality of Surabhi cow. Among the procreators, I am the Kandarpa, Kupit. And among the serpents, I am Vasuki. Among the snakes, I am Ananta. Ananta is the Ananta Shesha. Okay, serpent is snake. Uh, it's a kind of a snake. Uh, aquatic deities, I am Varuna. And among the departed ancestors, I am Aryama. Among the dispensers of law, I am Yama. Yama is our Yama Dharma Raja, right? Because he's supposed to do that. That's his job. Among Deitya demons, I am Pralada. Okay, this is, you will see, when you see in Goloka chart also, you will see the house of deity demons in the Padal. Among the subduers, I am time. Imagine time is a very important subject. Among the beast, I am lion. Among the birds, I am Garuda. Among the purifiers, I am the wind. And among the wielders of weapon, I am Rama. And fishes, I am shark, right? Among the fishes, he clearly says he's a shark. Among the rivers, he's a Ganges. Because we all know the story of Ganges, where when Krishna from Amana, right, like a dwarf, he appeared. And when he spread his leg up to the spiritual sky, you know, there was a small hole made and Ganges from there started pouring down. Among the creations, I am the beginning, end and also the middle, right? And among the sciences, I am the spiritual science of self. And among the logicians, I am the conclusive truth. And among the letters, I am A. That is, I am the art, I am the beauty. And he goes on and on, right? Among the women, this is very, very important. He says, fame, fortune, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness and patience, right? Seven qualities in a woman is what Krishna says. So many times people keep asking in Bhagavad Gita, they keep telling women are foolish, this, that and all, what now. Krishna has declared, among the women, these are the qualities I are in. Among the hymns, I am the Brihat Sama. Among the poetry, I am Gayatri. You all know the Gayatri Mantra, right? And among the months, I am Madhya right? What we currently went by, right? Now, but it's just left. And among the season, I am the spring, flower and bearing. And December is when Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. Among cheats, I am gambling. Among splendid, I am splendor. Among strong, I am the strength. Among the dependence of Vishni, I am Vasudeva. Among Pandavas, I am Arjuna. Among sages, I am Vyasa. Among thinkers, I am Usana. So Vyasa is an incarnation of Krishna. And Pandavas, see, here also he says, I am Arjuna. Because Arjuna is perfect. You may tell, why not you this But there are some qualities of Arjuna which outstrikes him also. So that is why he says, among Pandavas, I am Arjuna. I am pun among punishment, I am the rod of chastisement. Among victory seekers, I am morality. Among secrets, I am silence, right? So now you will see, can you see, this is only the Kama Devi form, right? So these are all present here. So let's move to 10.39. Hare Krishna. Furthermore, O Arjuna, I am the generating seeds of all existence. Says there is no being mo moving or unmoving that can exist without me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So very clearly he says, I am ge generating seed. He also says, no, I am the seed giving father. So he says, I am the generating seed for all existence and there is 
no being moving or unmoving shara akshara that can exist without me so very clearly is saying everything rests upon me 10.40 hari krishna oh my ji component of means there is no end to my divine manifestation what i have spoken to you is but um more indication of my infinite opulences hari krishna It says, "Oh, mighty, you know, conqueror of enemy." He is telling there is no end to my divine manifestation. There is no; it's not going to end. It will go on and on. Whatever I have spoken to you is only a very small portion, right? And my opulences are very small, and this portion is extremely tiny. Is what he is mentioning. So, what is he saying? He is saying, "I can't. There is no end. I have to go on." So, my session is only one hour now, and you have told three to four sharp. I should finish. So, in that one hour, I can't. I can finish only this much. And Krishna is telling the same thing. He says that. in totally 45 minutes uh, to tell bhagavad gita totally to you and in the middle of a mar field and i just do not have time because if i am going to talk about my opulence your lifetime will not be sufficient so he says here that 10.41 you can read my thoughts here hey krishna what it all open and beautiful and glorious creations spring from but a spark of my splendor hari krishna And Krishna is so clearly saying, know that all the opulence, the beauty, the creations, everything springs from my single spark of my creation. So he is telling how he has come. So that is what he is saying. This, Hare Krishna, Yadya Vibhuti Mat Satvam, Shri Mat Ujitam Eva Va Tat Tat Eva Va Gat Chatvam Mama Tejom Sa Sambhavam. Hare Krishna, that we all know. Knowing that all beautiful, yes, glorious and mighty creations spring from my butter spark. So this is what it says even in Vishnu Upanishad, uh, right? That we we are you know we are all part and parcels of Krishna and we are all spiritual spark, right? So that is what is clearly mentioned. And let's see ten point four two Hare Krishna. Atava bahu ne te na kimya te na tavajuna. Single fragment for me is sufficient to support the universe. I'm willing to tell you, but what are you finally going to do? Because even a tiniest fragment I can do. So this is what he said very clearly, as I said in Isho. Yes, to Sarvani Bhutan, Atmani Van Pashyati, Sarva Bhute Shuchatmanam Tado Na Vijupshati means what? Very clearly, I am a spiritual. Everyone is part and parcel of Krishna. We are all spiritual sparks. And who sees that way is the uttama here. So all you whoever has pets in the house realize that whatever paramatma in your heart and the paramatma in the pet's heart is the same. So you have to take of everyone equally, right? Not just the human beings; it's the living beings. So Krishna from one to seven says, "Name Vidu Sura Gana." Krishna is unknowable and source of all, right? And he says, "Pure bhakti is essence of Bhagavad Gita." So we already saw very clearly and. So in ninth chapter we saw devotional service is the most confidential knowledge. And here he vouches it by saying mat chitta mat gatha prana. Right, is very important. Right, pure devotional service. And Arjuna accepts Krishna's supremacy. Right, that's why he offers the prayer param brahma param dhama avitram param ambavan purusham shashmitam devyam adi devam ma jambi bhum. And also gives testimony with the great people, telling that it's not only me. Right, even Atilo. Yasa, Narada, all of them, Swayam Chayva Bhavishya Mimi, right? They are also giving the same word. They say themselves have told, and Lord Krishna explains his beauties by because nobody else know him so well to explain, and therefore his beauties can be explained only by Krishna himself. So that is what he very <laughs> beautifully is explaining. And not only that, the speciality of Krishna is that Krishna is someone who will never, never let go. Anyone, right? He is so mad of his devotees that he will do anything for the sake of devotees. So that is the end of the ten chapter. So, is there any doubt? Otherwise, we can go on to the mind control. Do you all have any doubt? No. Well done.
so shall we move to the mind control so just so mind control we were seeing the various uh, right slides in terms of how many uh, what are all the mind control techniques we saw we saw broadly two categories which spoke about uh, you know our mind control in terms of the physical asanas and all that and we also saw mind control which spoke about the the besides the physical the mental met methods also now today we are going to see the spiritual method so let me just take you to that so before that vancha kalpa darubhyas cha kripa sindhubhya eva cha patitana pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namah hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare 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 krishna now i am going to get to my normal yes so let's go to the controlling of the mind so we are here seeing the current slide so the spiritual method right we have to start from here so we had a quick recap of the soul which is being covered by the gross body which we know but between the gross and the subtle and the uh, soul there is a subtle body which does not leave you and go and that is what gross body made up of bhumi apo nalo vayu kam right earth water air fire and ether but the subtle body is mano buddhi ahankar all three right mind false ego and intelligence they are not letting go the mind and that's the issue for the whole thing so we are talking about association so let's take a very hot piece of iron in fire and if you see the propensity of the fire is going to be shifted to that hot iron because if you are going to touch that it's going to be as good as a fire right so the qualities are changing so why am i we talking this because we thought provoking this daily indulge in activities that are only by sorry only winning and enlightening right always these things have a impact Now, what does Mark Twain say? The man who does not read good books has no advantage over a man who cannot read them, which is as good as a reader. He's saying that if you do not read good books, you might as well don't learn reading. Right? Success on the outside always begins with inside. Right? That's a very important thing. And another very powerful tool is mantra meditation. We've been doing this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Now you can start reading. In one study, a simple sound meditation technique used for 20 minutes a day caused profound changes in blood pressure, stress, handling ability, immune immune response, and feelings of well-being. Dr. Ah. Jeffrey D. Thompson, a uh, Center for Neurosurgical Research, something India knew long, long, long ago. Hare Krishna. We are talking about today increasing yoga. We'll do meditation now, but India they've already done it many, many years. So just that since it is from India, we don't want to accept it. This is one study of simple sound meditation. Sound vibrations are very important. You know, we used to do an exercise in sound vibration. So today, if I ask everyone, what made you be here, right? Not just the Bhagavad Gita class. I'm talking about your life or your career or your job. You will have a sound vibration in your life which is influenced. It could be your mother, and you know which is the greatest sound vibration yourself. You you speak. most of the time you tend to talk to yourself though it is not evident you don't realize so a simple sound meditation for 20 minutes causes a lot of these positive effects what is your sender we always saw right uh, what's your driving force inspiration of your life do you want to make get money you want to make parents happy you want to make your girlfriend happy you want to make your boyfriend happy what do i spend time on tv sports studies who or what is my obsession who is your hero worship right is it a cine actor is a movie actor is a villain people nowadays like villains right center or wrong center doesn't matter is it hero center or friend center sports center study friends money center country pleasure thing center self center church center temple center mosque center or principal center right so what's the diving sports the same question so law of god right log or universal principles whatever we saw earlier are the universal principles right whatever we are talking about is god center so if you are having whatever law of god right if you are talking about universal principle which are both same law of god or universal principle has one center because both of them are alive but if you take any other center as i just said we saw so many centers right money center mummy center then it is confusing so all this law of god or universal principles means it's like traffic. 
But if you do not do that, then it becomes chaotic. Right? Now, how can I have? I have so many things. Yes, you can. You can just have Krishna in your center. And many of you all ask, right, where do I have time? So you have money, family, spouse, self, church, enemy, friend, pleasure, work, and possessions. <laughs> all this, all these are building in here. And this can all have one set of just Krishna center. What is the advantage of having God centric thing? They have an, it's internally driven, right? And it's a clear vision. Whereas any other center is externally driven because you can't control a lot of other centers. Security and guidance is very high, whereas here there is instability. Yes, we are satisfied in life and future eternal life is guaranteed because no other center, nobody else, including parents, can guarantee that. Right? Confident. Right? Whereas you are helpless and dependent. Now, results are predictable here and results are unpredictable here. Why am I suffering? Cycle of sin, right? So, we are having this concept called ignorance. Why am I suffering? We always ask this question, right? Why me, Krishna? Why me? So, it talks about ignorance is avidya. And avidya leads to what's called the material desire, right? Bija, bija means see. So when you're ignorant about something, you have a lot of desires, right? And that will make you do the papam, which makes you do the sinful activity. This is from nectar of devotion. It's a little heavy. But doing the papam, you have to suffer. Now, there are two kinds of suffering. One which you can see. It's called the manifested. You know, like you get disease, you have going through jail or something like that, you know, where you are going through the trauma, the features, all this are there, right? The legal complications in life. So clearly, you have avidya, which results in, because of lack of knowledge, you have lots of seeds, which makes you do the papam and lose. So all this suffering for this, you will go through hell and you will go through this kind of trauma. The law of karma, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. All of you, nice, no? Newton law. So what is happening? When you do this papam, there are two things. You have manifest and unmanifest, right? So manifest is what you saw already, right? Disease, old age, you know, ugly features and all. Unmanifested is called apraratta, which means it's not yet seen. You don't. It's like a thief. If he is caught, he is manifested and he goes to punishment. If he is not, it is an unmanifested stage and therefore it stays in your dabba and it will come to you anytime. So indirectly, it effect, okay, it suffers by increasing the sinful reactions. So what happens? Manifests sinful reaction. So what is the cycle of sinful thing? You have ignorance, you have sinful desires, you have unmanifest desires, and you have karma, which we saw, right? And if it is unmanifested, which means that if you do not suffer, then you are, have this that sin tendency to do more mistake, like a robber. He runs out, he escapes. What happens? He has more tendency to make the mistake again and again. So that's called kutam. Tendency to do. And it again becomes a sinful desire, right? Because he's not caught. He wants to steal rob. The exact robber only is given. Should I steal money? I will steal money, he decides, right? If he's arrested, he is manifested. But if he is not arrested, he will continue the sinful effects. Just like the elephant who takes bath, comes out and again puts mud in his head, right? So that's the same habit which will be there. Why for atonement? What do you mean by atonement? It means prajita. You do all this prajita, you go back and do the same thing. A tree of sinful reaction can be destroyed. What will you do to the root, right? From the tree, roots come. So, Ma Mantra is the only way where you will destroy with the roots. So, I have told you the story of Ajamila, right? Two days back, we saw the picture where he went to the roots to pick and he sees this uh, prostitute. And he gets completely attracted. And at the age of 88, he calls his two-year child as Narayana. And you have a big fight with Vishnu Budas and Yamadudas. And finally, they give him a second chance. So, this is a fight. Very cute looking, right? Vishnu Budas, just like Vishnu. And they have a fight. contract manufacturer engineer. Let's understand this big question. How to make your mind our friend? Whichever problem, whichever gadget, what do you call if it is repaired? Call a manufacturer or a certified engineer. In case of a mind, who's a manufacturer? Come on, guess. Who's a manufacturer for a mind? <laughs> Do you have a mind? You made hmm? Did you make your own? No, I want interaction. Otherwise, I'm going to wait here. There's no right or wrong answer. No, we haven't created our mind by own. 
We have not, right? So who is our manufacturer? Thank you so much. Krishna, Krishna, so beautiful, right? So Krishna is a manufacturer. Who is a certified engineer? A genuine spiritual master like Srila Prabhupada. Now, why do you call a spiritual master? Because it's, could Krishna be a direct uh, master for us? Yes, he is the Chaita Guru as Paramatma, but we are not yet that pure. So we need the help of a very pure devotee because devotee has an unfl unflinching faith. He, at the age of 69, went in a cargo ship with 40 rupees and had two heart attacks. We won't be able to do that, right? They've given us this manual called the Bhagavad Gita, as it is. It's a practical guide about how to control our minds. And when we find a problem, we call the manufacturer. And what's our number? How do we call our manufacturer? So, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam. Kalo nasti eva nasti eva nasti eva katir anyata. Right? There's no other way. There's no other way. There's no other way other than chanting this holy mantra told in 6.11 in Bhagavad Gita and reiterated by Chaitanya Prabhu. So in the Kali Santareya Upanishad, it is stated same thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Iti Nua Chaka Namna. Kali Kalmana Nachana Nato Paratharopyao Sarva Vedenu Dachyate Hare Krishna. The 16 words of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra especially meant to counter the issues one faces in Kali. To save oneself, there is no alternate but chanting the 16 words. So now Mantra. Mantra Man means mind and Tha means deliver. And this Maha Mantra delivers the mind from all pure impurities and makes it come. And now we already saw this chariot, right? <coughs> the senses are the elephants, sorry, the horses, sorry, and the brains are the mind. And if you don't control them, you know, mind takes control, then it will go haywire. Because the chariot driver is the intelligence, and the person who's sitting is a soul, and the vehicle is none but our body, right? I mean, this material body. So today our society where we think happiness meant to be about enjoyment, all this, so much are there, right? Such food, beautiful forms, we want to satisfy the demands of the eye, hear lovely music, all this we do, smell a lot of things, right? So what happens is all the horses are in the wild, they are in different direction. Therefore, we just, our mind, which are the reins, we just can't control. The intelligence becomes weak, even though it has to be stronger. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita recommends us to regulate and control our senses by regulating, we gain control over mind and intelligence. So, Srila Prabhata instructs, conditioned souls means one who is being controlled by the mind. Conditioned soul, currently, what is the problem? We think we are controlling the mind, but we are being controlled. That is the meaning of condition. Very beautifully is defined. So, let's keep telling, what do you mean by conditioned soul? Conditioned soul means the mind is a boss. So, you are a slave of your mind. Mind says, why not smoke one cigarette? And if you are smoking, or if you are drinking, then you are controlled by the mind. If not, then you are successful. That is what most of the my freedom and doing my freedom. You can't jump from the 20th floor. No, you lose your freedom. So that is what it is. Lord Krishna instructs in Bhagavad Gita. Right? So this is very nice. Vishaya Hare Krishna. Vishaya Vinivakante Daharasya Dehina Raso Varjam Raso Apyasya Param Drishtva Nivartate Parandrishva, higher taste, right? So everybody say you need to give the body a higher taste to sit. I want to ask you one thing. This guy is so poor and he just has one meal of chapati. If you go and ask him the chapati, will he give you or not? Yes or no? Yes. He'll give you the chapati? He has only one chapati. He's not had chapati and food, but if you go and ask, are you confident he'll give you? Maybe depends on the situation. If no, because he's not eaten for 10 days. So this is his only meal. He's got this meal. Will he give you? Will I give? I will not give if I'm, that's my only meal. Will you give? No. Yeah, very unlikely, right? You are very thoughtful. It's nice that you believe he will share. But then if I just have one chapati after 10 days, if you're coming, I would like to close my face and as if I'm not seeing you already. Right? So Maybe we can share so, the chapati. Ah, but you won't feel like sharing if you have very little, no, if you're craving. But it's a good idea, right? But we, let's see what he says. If you ask him to give up eating, then it will be very difficult. He needs to fill his hungry stomach, right? See, look at him. 
So, however, if you give him a plate of sumptuous meal and ask him to give off that right chapati, will you give him now? At least now you tell him. Water system, you give him this and you ask for the chapati, will he give? Yes, he will give. Yeah, I will give. You can give me a full meal. He will joy, joyfully give up as he has a better option, right? So, similarly, we experience higher taste, param drishtva, right? Higher taste, then we will give up, right? So, so this is uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction, very beautiful uh, sloka. He wrote only eight slokas. This goes like this. Anandam vivardhanam pratipadam purnam rita swadhanam sarvatma snapanna param vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam, which means all glories to Shri Krishna Sankirtan, which cleanses the heart of all the dust accumulated for years and extinguishes the fire of conditional life. Conditional life means what? Maya is controlling or mind is controlling. So he is very clearly telling that he has come here to liberate the people from this ocean. So this is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu references 9.1.7. By chanting the holy names, automatically agitated minds become clarified, pacified. Many of you told, how will I concentrate? How can I increase my vision? This is how. So, Krishna instructs in Bhagavad Gita, Yam Lapva Chaparam Laptam Manyate Nadikam Tata. In this joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness. Upon gaining this, he thinks there is no great gain because he is experiencing the higher taste. Right? And 15.15, he says, Sarvasya Chaham Vida Sanni Vas Pisto. You remember someone asked, which is 15, this was my first question from your team. Matta Spriti Jnana Apoha Nam Cha. I'm seated in everyone's heart. From me comes the remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. Right? So when we chant, Krishna immediately takes, now we don't have a chariot, so let's take car and car steering. Krishna immediately takes charge of it and he tells, I will take care. Right? So that is important. So for which, what should we do? We have to do sadhana by chanting the names for the purpose of purification. Chetu Darpana Marjana. That means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally comes and cleans the heart. To be yourself in the world that constantly trying to make yourself something else is the greatest accomplishment. So, what happens? To be yourself itself is very difficult, right? We Our qualities change because we land up doing for the sake of someone whom we don't like, buy things which we don't want <coughs> and end up in disaster which we really don't want to. Be in. Always keep the golden mind and set your priorities. We are constantly cleaning the golden cage but not feeding the parent, which is like the soul inside. The soul needs Krishna. Asurya namate loka andena kama savrita namste pegya vigachanti eke atma manojana. Soul needs Krishna. What it says? Set your priorities, guys. Permanent settlement in temporary place is so important, right? A human being has a higher intelligence, a power to discriminate, which is good, which is bad. And the real problem, none of us want to be in any of this problem, but nobody can avoid this Janma Bhichu Jara Vyadi. To inquire about and have a permanent solution to get permanent peace, everybody wants that, right? Meaningful life, one should inquire to the screen. So let's have the small confusion. We always have mind versus intelligence, which is more powerful. Obviously, mind, because mind is a feeling, right? Intelligence is a discrimination. You can understand what that intelligence is. How do you make intelligence stronger? You focus on the goal and by meditation. What is the goal? <coughs> have a vision which is long term or short term. Meditation, how it tells it gives clarity of the thought, determination, and gives you an extra edge. But what are the two major problems? Mind is more powerful than we think. Most of the time, we think intelligence. It is the most powerful thing. Intelligence is smarter. Should be like that. But unfortunately, mind is more powerful. Intelligence can get contaminated. Right? That's the biggest problem. Now, what can I do? Passenger has to wake up. Soul, set the alarm for the soul. And chanting the God's name, whichever God name is the alarm. And what is the benefit of chanting contents with container? Now, tell me, which is great among this? Is the look or the personality of the person? Is the content or the container? Any of them? You look, which one is great? Content or the content? Right? So content. That's what, uh, thank you. So the content, we like uh, Mother Teresa not because of her look, but because of her content. What she's doing. 
So we have to control the three modes, right? That, how can we do that? By getting into the control of Krishna, by making Krishna the supreme. Positive values of negative emotions, right? Sometimes negative emotions can be used for positive fear, right? Now, for example, if you want to smoke in your house, you're scared of your parents. That's a positive emotion. Though you may think, oh, forget it, let me fag and just leave it in the father's face. No. Fear of failure helps you to accomplish. This is face. Yeah, all this, right? You don't want to have it like this. <laughs> anger, right? Anger, how much you more grievous are the consequences of anger is supposed to be very risky because you're, it swells your head. Right? It's sneakily like this. Disappointment makes you curious to make sure it makes you rethink. So sometimes you can have negative emotions, but you can realign it positively. <laughs> Including Anman. He had a negative emotion of anger, but he aligned it for Krishna. Guilt. Okay. Guilt is a very important uh, point because learn to accept the fact that just because you have made a mistake, you're not a mistake. Very commonly, they say in schools also, you are useless. You're useless, right? They're very common words. Nobody has the right to tell you you're useless and you are never a mistake. Now I'm going to go back. Anyone knows who this actor is? No? Role of emotion, positive values of negative emotion, right? We already saw how they can be. Feeling uncomfortable makes you actually do <laughs> things right. Right? You go to a place, you feel uncomfortable, somebody behavior is wrong. It makes you uncomfortable, it's fine. Positions, right? Consumer aversion, it's a philosophy. You work in a job you hate. I like this a lot. To buy stuff that you don't need, to impress people that you don't like. Most of the time, we do this. Conclusion, when mind control benefits are positive changes, develops excellent memory, you people are asking, good health, improves personal relationship, self-confidence, and this. So what in terms of the summary? The problem we face today is due to uncontrolled mind, and that's why we saw physical, mental, and spiritual. Spiritual methods are best as their result is permanent purification. Cheto Dharpana, right? So it talks about permanent purification and it is not temporary. Before I end, let's pray our obeisances to Shishi. Hare Krishna. Right? So on dot 4 o'clock. Right? Thank you so much. Any other doubts? If you don't have any doubt, we can go about, uh, we can start chanting. Any doubts? So today is the 10th day. Very simple max. Into 6, 60 times we chant. So who's going to chant? Your hand is raised, so I assume is it for chanting or is it for leading? Okay. Uh, I will mute. You can go ahead and chant. Nobody's chanting. Rekha will chant. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. You can uh, stop the recording now.